Well, hey there, boys and girls. We are gonna make a patriotic pinwheel. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need some construction paper. You're gonna need some sort of stick to stick the pinwheel on. I have a chopstick here. You know, order Chinese food the night before because Chinese food is delicious. And then save one of your chopsticks. Okay, so you got a stick. I need glue, a couple of small beads, scissors, and something to write with. All right, so first of all, your paper is gonna need to be a perfect square. I happen to have something to help me out right here. I just make a little tiny mark and turn up the chopstick this way. Little marks. Use child safety scissors if you need to or get your mom or dad. And there we go. We don't need these pieces of paper. I'm just gonna put them right here. You could use those for bookmarks. Let's get our paper decorated. Fold the paper and fold the paper. So you got four little squares. I'm gonna cut one. I glued the blue paper. Now this is Elmer's glue. I asked Elmer if I could borrow it though. He said it was fine. Like a red square, eh? You fold, you fold, and cut the square. So now I'm gonna glue down. There we go. Just beautiful. So that's how we're looking so far. I wanna have alternating colors. I already have these extra squares of paper. And we'll see how it comes out. Next step, we're gonna make some diagonal lines which we are going to cut from one corner just about an inch and a half to the center. Make one here. That's a good line. All right, this is looking pretty good. So there, it's kinda like a little man. Now we fold. So you fold every other corner down into the center. So you're just holding down. So we've got a thumbtack. Stick the thumbtack through. This is where we are with our pinwheel. So we're almost done. We've gotta put a bead over the middle of the thumbtack. I made a little tiny hole already with my thumbtack so that I could get it on a little more easily. Pop it on. Now our pinwheel is pinned. If your pin comes through the other side, you may want to put a little bit of pencil eraser. So you don't want to get hurt. Arts and crafts should never hurt. Arts and crafts should heal. Arts and crafts should make people feel good. Arts and crafts should make your heart smile. Enough jibber jabber, Carol. I know what you're saying. Let's see if this pinwheel, let's see how she flies. Look at that. So what you want to do is take this outside to a barbecue, to the 4th of July parade, to the 4th of July pool party. Don't take it in the pool, don't get it wet because you have a sloppy mess that you blow on and it's just like Oh, who lives in a classroom under the sea? Crafty Carol. Not really, I, you know, don't live under the ocean, but uh, but I do live here at Cool School. I'm ready to do another craft for you. So today's craft is inspired by one of my favorite guys of all time, SpongeBob SquarePants. So we're gonna make an ocean in a bottle. Wow! So what do you need to make this craft? Pretty simple. First of all, it's an ocean in a bottle, so you need a bottle. You're gonna need some baby oil, some blue food coloring so it looks like the ocean. Got some little sea creatures. Got a dolphin here. Oh, really? He was just telling me some stuff right there. I got some whales, and I got a, oh, that was a shark. <laughs> and then I'm gonna make a little SpongeBob. So I got some, uh, some yellow foam here, and markers and a pencil. Sound good? Yeah? Well, let's get started making this craft. All right, step number one, take your clear plastic bottle. You're gonna wanna remove any labels if there are any on there. And I am gonna add some blue. Okay, so two drops of blue. Swirl that around. Next step, also super simple. Step number two, you're gonna pour some baby oil in there. So the cool thing about this, you might not know, is that oil and water don't mix. So this is gonna stay nice and separated for as long as you have your ocean bottle. All right, so next step, let's go ahead and get our SpongeBob ready to go in there. So you can see I, uh, I sketched some SpongeBob's here on some yellow foam. Now I'm just gonna trace that out with some, some marker. SpongeBob's pretty easy to draw if you just find a nice picture of him in a book or online, basically a square. Well, that's looking pretty good. Got a nice nifty little SpongeBob there. I'm gonna cut this guy out. All right, 
So we got our little SpongeBob here cut out. I'm just gonna draw on the back too, so he's not just one-sided. Let's do a Patrick too. Well, all right then. So we have got ourselves a little SpongeBob and Patrick right here that we're gonna put into our ocean bottle. If it's okay with these guys, I think they're okay with it. All right, so I got my bottle, my ocean bottle. Patrick is gonna go in there. Oh, there you go. Boop. Don't worry guys, we'll put the shark in there. He'll... Oh, let's do a dolphin for sure. Get him in there. Yeah, there we go, oh, there you go. Oh, it's a hammerhead shark. They can't fool me, you know what, sharks, sharks go over there. Just, just stay out of it. Oh, there's another one. Okay, oh, let's do a whale. Whales are fun. If I could get him in there though. He's as big as a whale. Okay, whew. All right, so we got a whale, we got a dolphin. Pop on the top here. So what you're gonna wanna do now is you're gonna wanna take some glue and go around the top of the bottle right here where the cap screws on so that you don't get a lot of oil leaking out. Ta-da! You got ocean waves in a bottle. Look at that. It's kind of like a snow globe, except it's full of, of the ocean. You got a dolphin and a whale in there, and SpongeBob and Patrick are just jumping around. Well, okay, so I want you to make your own and tell me about it in the comments. Tell me if you did anything different, if you added some sand or some different little, like maybe an octopus like Octavio. That would be fun. And tell me what craft you want to see next. Tape it out in the comments. I'm gonna, I'll listen to you. Hey there, boys and girls. Welcome to Arts and Crafts with Crafty Carol. Today, we're making something super special. It's a star jar. So what's a star jar, Crafty Carol? That's what you're asking me, and I know, I know. And you look up in the night sky, and you see all those twinkle, twinkle little stars? We're gonna grab them all and stuff them in this jar. You can even use it as a night light, you know? I'm not saying that you're scared of the dark, you know? Crafty Carol's a little scared of the dark. I don't like it. So, what do you need? Well, first of all, you're gonna need a jar. You're gonna need some tin foil. I've got some mounting tape here. Paper clips to poke holes in, the, in, in your tin foil to make the little stars. You need a light. Don't look directly into the light because it's, it's real bright. Let's get started. Pull out your tin foil. I love tin foil. You can make arts and crafts. You can make a shiny suit of armor. You can wrap up a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that you didn't finish at lunch that you want to save for an afternoon snack while you watched your programs. So take your jar. We're just measuring how much tin foil we need. Right about there. Cut, cut. All right, so that's a good size. Jars in my way. I'm just gonna stick it down here for a minute. So now you want to take a paper clip, okay? Right here, just take a little paper clip. All you gotta do, book. You can make them as big as you want, small as you want, and as many as you want. Crafty Carol making stars, making stars in tin foil. Book, book. James K. Polk was a president. Maybe Mr. Hister will tell you about that. <laughs> it looks like we've got a pretty good little starry sky here going. Got some mounting tape. The thing with this is it's sticky. It better be. And put a little. And roll it over. Okay then, so you got your tin foil. We gotta turn the lights out. I think I mentioned before that I'm a little bit scared of the dark, so I'm gonna find my light and put my light on right now. No! No! Told you not to look directly into the light. Let's put this little thing here in the jar, okay? No! Oh, would you look at that? So you can have it by your bed, use it as a nightlight, or just use it to wish on stars. Well, hey there, boys and girls. Crafty Carol here at Cool School with a brand new craft for you. Today, I am taking my inspiration from springtime, blue skies, and one of my all-time favorite creatures, the bee. We're gonna make a cute bee kite. 
and I'm going to use awesome little Maya the Bee here as my model. You can see for yourself why I like Maya the Bee by checking out her movie on DVD. You can look in the description for more details, or as I like to say, bee tales. Okay, so what do you need to make this craft? All you need is a yellow piece of paper, some string, a stapler, some black paint or markers for your stripes, and whatever else you want to decorate your bee with. I've got some fuzzy yellow pipe cleaner and some googly eyes, so I'll also need some glue for that. And that's all you need! This is gonna be the easiest, flyingest, bumblebeeinest kite you ever made, I promise. Now, let's see, uh, what time is it? Oh, I know what time it is! It's time to start making this craft! Well, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give our yellow paper some black bee stripes. You can use black paint or a marker. Uh, I'm gonna use this big marker here, and uh, let's just make some stripes up and down. Bees get a bad rap, but did you know that they help flowers and plants grow? Bees do that with the pollen they make, so next time you smell a pretty flower, eat a piece of delicious fruit. You better thank a bee. Thanks, bees. Well, there we go. Well, some pretty good looking bee stripes right there. So now what are we gonna do? We're just gonna flip it over. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. You are not going to believe how easy this kite is going to be to make. So the next thing you want to do is just fold your paper over like this. And you're just going to make a nice crease right here. Oh, I'm learning all about bees. How interesting. So the next thing I want to do is add some antenna. There you go. So I'm just gonna take my pipe cleaners here and just put them right there in the front. And then I am gonna staple them in place. That's how easy it is to get your antenna in there. So the next thing you wanna do is just fold back. Don't fold it down all the way. Don't make a crease in it. You want it to be nice and loose right here. That's where it's gonna catch the wind. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with the other side. And I'm just gonna staple that down. Now check that out. That's looking pretty good. We've almost got ourselves a kite here. So now we're gonna attach our string so our kite can fly up in the air. Kites need a string or else they just fly away and you never find them again. You know, Maya the Bee is actually a perfect inspiration for our craft because kites fly way up in the sky and Maya flies through the meadow and meet no friends. So, you know, we're both flying. So I'm gonna take this little bit of string here, the same place where you stapled your ends together. And if you want some extra security there, you can tie a little knot. But I think we got it pretty strong here. And last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some googly eyes. And I'm gonna put the eyes right up here. Here we go again, just waiting for glue to dry. And let's add our finishing touch here, the last googly eye. I mean, not the last googly eye ever. That would make me so sad. Well, there you have it, boys and girls. We got ourselves a bee kite here. There's just one step left. We gotta see how she flies. And there you have it, a bee kite. Perfect for a warm, breezy day. You might say I'm the, uh, I'm the queen bee of crafts. Well, hey there, boys and girls. Crafty Carol here with another new craft here at Cool School. Today's craft is super exciting because it involves one of my favorite nursery rhymes of all time, the Itsy Bitsy Spider 2. Spider-Man, you know, sort of, because it's a spider. And uh, candy, it involves candy. I am making a spider pinata. And we're gonna fill it with these lollipops. Super exciting. Okay, so what do you need to make this craft? Very good question, very glad you asked that. You're gonna need some tissue paper, duct tape, scissors, glue, pipe cleaners for fuzzy little spider legs, some candy, any kind of candy that you like. One of my favorite things of all time for crafts, uh, some googly eyes. And you're gonna need the actual uh, body of your spider. I'm gonna use a china ball. Now these you can get at Ikea or Target, someplace like that. You can also make it out of paper mache, but that's a little bit messy. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do, you take your chain of ball, and we're just gonna take some duct tape, and we're gonna cover up the bottom. Got a few pieces of tape. All right, so 
One step down, got our bottom of our pinata. It's ready to fill with candy, but not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay, to make the spider legs, I just took some pipe cleaners and I twisted them together and then I bent them into little shapes that look like spider legs. So I've got this one already ready with some tape. I'll just show you what we're doing. And there you go. So then we're just gonna do eight of these little spider legs because that's how many legs spiders have. Love pipe cleaners. Pipe cleaners are among, eh, they're, they're up there in my favorite things list with uh, candy and spiders. So this is, I'd say this is a pretty good day for Crafty Carol. All right. So next thing we do, we're gonna cover this with tissue paper. This is gonna take a while. Bear with me. All right, so you see here, I'm starting with my tissue paper. Right now, it looks like he's got a little bit of hair there on top. Uh, so what we do with the tissue paper is we cut it into strips like this. And then I also took some strips of tissue paper and I cut little fringe here. So it looks it's gonna look like our, our spider's nice and fuzzy. You just glue the pieces of paper on. Pretty simple. And I'm starting from the bottom so that when I turn my spider upside down, all his little fringe is gonna hang to the bottom. So I'm just gonna put on some glue here. Got my spider friend here looking pretty nice and fuzzy and fun. Oh, you know, one thing with spiders is they have a lot of eyes. Maybe we should add a lot of eyes. No, let's keep it non-creepy and just do two. Let's see. I give them two. And we gotta wait for the glue to dry. I heard some of you sounding off in the comments saying that you think you beat me in the staring contest last time we had one, so maybe I'll challenge you to another. All right, ready? Set. Go. You blinked. You blinked. I saw it. I won the staring contest. All right. So let's do the most fun part. Let's stuff this little spider full of candy. And then later when we bust the candy out, we'll stuff ourselves full of candy. That's my favorite part. All right, there you go. I hope you like lollipops. Oh, I sure do, Carol. Lollipops are my favorite. You know what? I'm just gonna stuff them all in. Put a little lollipop in his hand and give him a little lick. Oh, some more for me? Okay. Thanks, Spidey. Look at this guy. Busted open, candy comes out. It's the best craft ever. And if you wanna see Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man, a wonderful take on a classic nursery rhyme, click right over there. You're gonna wanna subscribe, follow us on Google Plus, and boys and girls, see you next time. Bye. 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 Wait, wave goodbye. He's, he's so rude. Bye. 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 All right, boys and girls, see you next time. All right, I'm gonna eat some candy.